We welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue. And this is the Mike Houston Radio Show, back for week number two, as the Citadel Bulldogs have some celebrating to do after a 69 to nothing victory in their opening game of the season as they knocked off the Davidson Wildcats at Johnson Haygood Stadium. And so we welcome you into our show. We have a crowd on hand here at Home Team Barbecue. We have a crowd uh, obviously with us on radio, and thank you very much for being with us this evening. The head coach will join us shortly as he's coming off the practice field. But we'll talk a little bit about that game from the other evening. It was a Bulldog clinic, if you will. They jumped out in front quite early in the ball game, if you will. Got it, uh, got on the board for the first time with six minutes and eight seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Then the dogs were uh, able to put another score on the board and another before the end of the first quarter. And so it was a uh, great performance for the dogs. They never looked back. They pitched a shutout for the first time in 102 games going back all the way to 2005. And so uh, quite a performance. And the head coach of the Bulldogs, Mike Houston, is here to talk about that. And, Coach, uh, that, uh, that was something else that your team put together the other day. Tell us a little bit about uh, Recap Davidson, if you will. Talk about the atmosphere that the team encountered uh, on Saturday at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Well, obviously it was a better-than-average opening night. So uh, very enjoyable. And, uh, you know, you, you never – you could probably sense it last week, even though I felt like we'd had a great preseason – you never know in openers, and you always worry about the unknown and, you know, how's Dominique going to react in a game atmosphere? You know, how, how's the team going to play? You know, last year in the opening game, I felt like we were so tight and, you know, made so many unforced errors uh, and really shot ourselves in the foot so much. And so you're so concerned about those things. But really, looking at it, I don't know if I've ever had a team play a cleaner opening ball game than we did Saturday night. You know, I think we had two penalties on our, on our first units. Uh, we had – one turnover, which was by a freshman, and it was a very, very close uh, deal there, um, and really operated really well offensively all night long. And defensively, you know, had no busted coverages. Uh, our longest play from scrimmage given up was 13 yards. Um, only had two plays of 10 yards or more uh, on the night uh, surrendered. And so uh, really played well in, on offense and defense and kicking game. You know, Eric – uh, showed the improvement that we've all seen during the preseason in his leg strength. I think seven touchbacks on uh, kickoffs uh, Saturday night. Converted all of his PATs where he had a uh, a good hold. You know, they had the one there that slipped away from Dane, and he had to, he had to fire call it, and uh, so we didn't get to try that one. But uh, overall, just a a really positive night from that standpoint. And you know, the core the core of cadets they were outstanding Saturday night. That was probably the loudest I've heard them. Uh, and I've, uh, I hope that we can get them a little bit louder this Saturday night because we're going to need it. We have a uh, you know, pretty pretty steep uh, in, you know, step up in competition this Saturday night with Western Carolina. But uh, it was overall just a, a great opening night for uh, for everyone. Huge uh, victory for the Dogs at 69 to nothing in the ball game there with great atmosphere. Uh, the school uh, broke or equaled four records in the ball game, and you had a top five performance in another four categories. And so there were a lot of milestones or near milestones in the game, a lot of looking up stuff to determine where it ranked on the all-time list. So uh, a very solid outing, uh, that's for sure. 535 rushing yards, uh, the third highest uh, in school history. And the one thing I noticed that you did, obviously everybody noticed that you did, was that you established a fullback because your two fullbacks ran a combined 37 times right. for 241 yards. And so right. you really established that and, uh, and and put them in a position uh, to defend something that they just couldn't stop. Right. And, that, you know, that was the goal going into the game. And we felt like that's we've got to build our offense around that. And so we wanted to come out in the opening ball game and, and really show that we have a formidable – uh, you know, first option there with a the fullback. And certainly we have a lot of confidence in all three players. Uh, and Isaiah and uh, Evan getting the bulk of the carries Saturday night were outstanding. You had a, uh, an honor already from the league office. Uh, in our postgame show, we award a Terminix Pest player of the game. And we always debate it. We, it it's always, uh, this guy did this, this guy did this. But in the end, we decided to go defense, and we went to Evan Floyd, too. Right. So we were happy that the league saw suit to name him the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, he gets his first uh, first pick six of his career and also had eight tackles. So a well-deserved award for him 
on a defense that really showed that I think it's going to be a different group this year. They looked faster to me. They pursued fast. I thought right. I really was impressed with your defense. Well, I just think everybody's on the same page. Uh, that, and I think we're in better shape. You know, and, and Tevin's a great example. You know, he, uh, he, he played good for us last year. He's a solid player, but – uh, we saw a different player in spring practice, and especially in fall camp. And, you know, he's had several interceptions in fall camp. He's had a couple he's ran back during fall camp. A similar plays to that right there. And he's just a very instinctive ball player and a very smart football player. And, and I was just really excited to see him take all the hard work he's put in building up to this season and, you know, be able to put out a performance like that Saturday night. It was a fun outing, no question. The Bulldogs <laughs> win 69 to nothing, and we're going to take a timeout. On this show – we have a lot of things to get into this evening. We want to talk about, obviously, some recap of the ball game we just saw, but also previewing Saturday's game because, as Coach mentioned, it's a very big game with Western Carolina coming in. Some of the po uh, polls, uh, the two polls, one of them had them second in the league this year. The other one had them third. Uh, coach is friendly with their head coach. We have a lot of those sorts of things that we can talk about as we go along here as the Mike Houston Radio Show operates this evening from Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue. We're glad to have you with us, and we'll return in a moment on Sports Radio 1450. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. Value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. With the head coach of the Citadel Bulldogs, Mike Houston. I'm Mike Legg. Welcome back to Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue, the new home for our home team. The Mike Houston Radio Show in week number two. And week number two of the season begins coming up this weekend as Western Carolina comes to town. A very, very solid opponent for the Citadel Bulldogs. And likewise, as each of the teams got opening week wins, they were able to win 42 to 14. The Citadel Bulldogs win 69 to nothing. I asked you this in uh, in jest at your press conference yesterday, Coach. But uh, how much revenge are you seeking for your alma mater <laughs> this week after Mars Hill was defeated by Western Carolina? Well, the good thing is I've got to see them on film a good bit this week, and uh, of course that staff up there coached me when you know when I was playing. So. I always want to see them do well, but uh, it just wasn't in the wasn't in the the cards for them last Saturday night. But uh, wishing them the best of luck the rest of the way. But uh, you know, certainly Western, uh, you know, made some huge plays there in that ball game, especially in the third quarter. 
uh, to really break the game open. I think it was 20 to seven at the half, and then uh, Western came out and really took control uh, there in the early early in the second half and pulled away. So, uh, you know, very good win for their program Saturday night. It was extremely early in the game when Western Carolina scored for the first time. Yeah. I think they uh, halfback passed double, them. Double, yeah, double pass. Flipped it out there to uh, Ramsey, I believe, yeah. and uh, and he throws it to Robinson uh, down the sideline, and he goes in untouched. So, uh, pretty good way to start the ball game. Seventy-five yard touchdown, yeah. if if I remember right. And so they uh, they go out and go ahead, and uh, a couple of scores later, they had iced it and uh, put the thing away. And uh, so both teams are unbeaten after one week. And so we have a lot of things to talk about with regards to Western Carolina coming up in just a little bit from right now. I would imagine going back to the ball game that we just had that a 69 to nothing shutout would feel good for a guy who made a lot of his living on the defensive side of the football. Well, certainly uh, I take a lot of pride in the way my team's played defensively and uh, was not pleased at all with the way we played last year. And so uh, we've, we've put a tremendous amount of work in on that side of the ball, not only uh, the players uh, with, you know, de developing themselves with the staff. You know, we, lo we looked at every possible thing that you could look at uh, since the end of the season last year and changed quite a bit. Um, and so we feel, you know, very, very good with uh, our adjustments going into the season. And I think the staff and Coach Drayton did a great job preparing the team for Davidson. And they're uh, working very, very hard right now uh, to get ready for Saturday night in Western Carolina. Four interceptions in the ball game. You had a while before you got one last year. It's just the way yeah. it worked out. It was seven weeks before your first. You got two against Western Carolina. Then you got one yeah. the following week in the Mercer ball game and then went three weeks without one. So you had three last year. You get four in the opening game. You're on, you got a heck of a pace going here. Well, you're not playing with freshmen in their first college football game this year either. <laughs> so, you know, last year, you know, we had a boatload of just puppies back there in the secondary. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the maturity and the development of Devontae Delaney and you know, having an experienced player like Muriel Cooper, uh, you know, coming back there and in the big play by Dondre Copeland, who's improved so much since last year. Uh, and then finally the one with Tevin, which uh, you know just really, really was a, a huge play in the ball game. But uh, you look at those guys; one wasn't even with us, and the other three, three have improved so much since last year. So I don't think you're gonna, I think you're gonna see a lot more games where we make more plays like that than uh, what you did a year ago. Coach's point uh, to 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 two coaches point: 23 new players of the 41 you played on Saturday. Uh, is what it turned out to be. So right. I mean, there were a lot of new faces that got onto the yeah. field and uh, and did a lot of things. So uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, we we broke out the program. There's no question about that. Yeah, we knew. I've been I've been kind of raving over uh, this signing class that we had uh, this past uh, winter a lot since uh, since National Signing Day, and I think uh, you know our fans got to see a lot of those guys Saturday night and see why we're so excited about them. You, know, you saw. Aaron Spann have a big tackle on his first college snap. You saw Rod Johnson uh, score once and almost score twice and have several big runs there uh, on the night. And, and then you saw Ken Allen and Kevin Graham both log a lot of snaps on the defensive front. Uh, you saw Tyler Davis lead uh, several scoring drives there in the second half at center. And so you can see a lot of why uh, we're so excited with those guys. I was glad to see Rod get his touchdown after the one that he did not yeah. get. But you shared with us uh, after the game that uh, – maybe it was a half I can't recall which one it was. But uh, that – hey, that's an institution opportunity. Sure. Sure it does. You know, it's not a – Sometimes you have those teaching opportunities and they're extremely painful because they <laughs> cost you a game. So I told him, I said, you know, this is not that bad. I said, this is – you know, this, this taught you a valuable lesson about – carrying the ball and what's behind you and, you know, taking care of it in a crowd and, and you're going for the pylon, you got to protect it still. And at the same time, it didn't really hurt us. Uh, you know, we scored a few plays later with Dondre's uh, pick and then uh, the pass to Jory and Jordan, I believe, uh, that got us, got us in the end zone just a few minutes later. So a uh, good lesson for him. He's, he, he is really going to be a special player. He is just an outstanding young man and just a, a, a good talent. There are a lot of different ways that you can learn about what happened in a ball game, and you can uh, read about it, listen to it, whatever the case may be. But they're always you – know, or not always, but sometimes out of ball games, there are guys who maybe don't get – as much credit for things they did. Were there unsung bulldogs in week number one that you can think of? Well, there always are. You know, for us, our offensive line 
probably gets more attention than most do, but yeah. you know, it's not like they get their, their name called out every snap, but I thought we really played well up front and what I expected from a group that was returning all five starters. So, uh, and our wide receivers, Alex Glover did not catch a pass Saturday night, but he was uh, very impactful in the run game with his blocking. Um, Vinny, maybe, you know, he had, I know he carried the ball some, but you know, Vinny made plays in the pass game, made plays in the running game, made plays as a lead blocker for not only the backside halfback, but for Dominique and the fullbacks as well. So there's lots of guys like that. And the same thing, you know, defensively, you, you know, Ken Allen didn't get a lot of attention, you know, from, you know, making a lot of tackles and stuff, but he really, really played well in his first college football game Saturday night. And couldn't be more excited about him and just the way he stepped in and just, you know, out of, out of the gate showed some maturity. The old adage is, is that you'll see your most improvement between week one and week two. I so hope so. I hope you, yeah, <laughs> I, I would think that's encouraging to you. It is, and, and, and we need to. Is You know, I'm not telling anybody, you know, everybody something they don't know, but we're going to see a, a lot different football team this Saturday night than what we saw last Saturday night. Uh, we're going to see one of the top teams in SOCON. I think they're ranked in the top 30 or 35 in the country right now in the, in the polls. Uh, we're going to see a very, very good team, a team that has 21 of 22 starters back. I think they've got 40 of their top 45 players back, uh, a very experienced team, a very explosive team, uh, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. So we are going to be challenged Saturday night, so we need to improve. At the same time, I think our kids are playing with a lot of confidence. So I, I, I don't expect us to flinch or back down or anything like that. I think that uh, both of us are going to get the very best from the other. Were there specific places where you felt like correction needed to be made? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's some things on special teams that we needed to shore up. Uh, there's a few things with some of our fits up front on defense that we needed to, needed to correct there. And then, you know, there's a few things with Dominique. I mean, it's his first college start. You know, we, the good thing is we were able to put him in pressure situations that we can't simulate in practice. And he played very, very well. And at the same time, there's a handful of things that we can clean up there, whether it be with his footwork or a few missed reads or whatever, that will allow him to be a much better operator this Saturday night than he was last Saturday night. I'm glad you brought him up because I was definitely going to ask you again to evaluate the way he managed the football game. He so. played well. I mean, he ran for, I don't know what his stats were, but he, you know, he ran for a good number of yards, had a couple of scores. He was five for five passing, uh, so had a decent night there. But the big thing that, that stands out to me as a coach is our offense operated smoothly with him in there. You know, we did not have a delay a game penalty. I didn't even have to call timeout to st stop us from having a delay a game penalty. Mm -hmm. That's not the case last year early in the year. Uh, we did not have the ball on the ground with exchanges or mesh problems, you know, during the night. Um, you know, we, we were – the ball, uh, like I said, other than two missed reads on 70-some plays, or I forgot, I mean, he was in there, 50-some, uh, you know, he distributed the ball where it was supposed to go on each down. So, you know, when you look at that for a guy that's his first college start, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. You know, it is in, in this offense, it is. 11 carries, 81 yards. He only had one lost yard, 82. Uh, yeah, and that was gross. his own fault, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> And as Coach mentioned, five for five for 67 yards and a touchdown. So he counted for three scores in the ballgame and 148 yards as far uh, as that goes. And so, uh, uh, and I, uh, I said this in the press conference yesterday. He was two for two against Florida State last year. He was five for five in this game. He hasn't thrown an incompletion in a game yet. Well, I hope we're saying that next Saturday, next uh, Wednesday <laughs> night. So, uh, if we are, then we've probably had another another pretty good night. I would think so. We are at 20 minutes past the uh, hour here on the Mike Houston Radio Show. We're going to take a break, come back with more with the coach in just a couple of moments. We're at Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley, and we'll return after this on Sports Radio 1450. more for you at Substation 2. Since 1975, Substation 2 has been serving to order freshly made subs on our specialty New York style bread, piled high with the finest meats and freshest produce. 
from the number 19 Super Special with seven mouth-watering meats and cheeses to an assortment of specialty sandwiches and salads. Substation 2 proudly supports the Citadel Bulldogs with two locations in Charleston and 43 locations throughout the Southeast. Welcome back, Bulldogs fans. It's 722. Welcome back to Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue and the Mike Houston Radio Show with the head coach of the Citadel Bulldogs. I am Mike Legg. We have the Western Carolina Catamounts coming to town this week for a huge game. It's the opener in the Southern Conference for both teams, and it's the first league game that will be played this year. So uh, quite a way. Uh, to get it underway there. Before we uh, go too much further, uh, at the beginning of yesterday's uh, press conference that Coach has every Tuesday uh, on the uh, fourth floor of uh, Johnson Haygood Stadium, he made mention uh, of something that I wanted to give him an opportunity to speak about here. Coach, you referred to having uh, lost a close family friend. First yeah. of all, very sorry about that. Very sorry to hear about that. And uh, I thought that uh, you might want an opportunity to say something about that in this forum. Well, Mike, you know, Mike and Kim Fisher have been close friends of Amanda and mine's. Uh, you know, we've, we've our first date, we uh, we were with them. And so we've known them, you know, ever since we've been together. And they've, you know, been great supporters of, uh, of my career and, and have gotten to know my staff uh, very, very well and have been with us, you know, everywhere we've been. And uh, Kim has been battling breast cancer for the past three years, and uh, she passed uh, yesterday morning uh, in her sleep. And uh, Mike was right there with her, and and uh, she was just such a such a beautiful person and young, vibrant life. And uh, you know, really sad to see uh, you know to see that uh, to see that happen. But uh, you know, just ask that everybody keep Mike and and her family in their prayers and. Uh, uh, Amanda and the boys will be going up this weekend uh, to be with them and, and uh, Kim's family. And uh, so it be, be a tough weekend for them. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. Again, sorry to hear about that, Coach. Uh, this, this is a uh, big ball game. I want to go into a couple of different things that have to do with uh, this weekend. First of all, yeah. Military Appreciation Night at uh, Johnson Haygood Stadium. Uh, it's a wide out, too, so yep. lots of things going on this weekend when the uh, dogs play the Catamounts. Yeah, you know, Military Appreciation Night is a, a, a bigger deal uh, at the Citadel than it is most schools because of the, the military background that so many of the, our cadets have and will serve in the armed forces. And so it's a, uh, it's a special night for our alumni and fans. Uh, so it's something that, uh, you know, we take very, very seriously. You know, not that anyone doesn't with these nights, but uh, maybe we take it a little more seriously. Um, and then uh, the idea for, for marketing to have a, a whiteout uh, on Saturday night was really geared around getting the fans involved and, and creating a little more excitement around our conference opener. And so the team will be in, in white from head to toe and, uh, and we encourage all of our fans and uh, and everyone coming out to support the Bulldogs to be in uh, in all white Saturday night and uh, and to be as loud and as uh, enthusiastic as they can be in supporting of the football football team. And if you follow along with the uh, release that showed the six different uniforms, this is the one farthest to the left, dress white. So now you got the one on the far left and the next one covered yep. in two ball games here. So plenty of time to work in those other uh, four. Combinations, so and, I'm, and I'm sure the core they're gonna they're probably gonna you know throw in their uh, their part into white out uh, Saturday night too. So look forward to seeing that. That should be a nice sight whenever uh, Saturday's game comes along. Six o'clock 
is kickoff time. We're on the air at 4 with our pregame coverage of all the different things that are uh, going on with regards to the Citadel Bulldogs and the Western Carolina Catamounts. And uh, one thing I was curious about with regards to the game you just played, because, and I can think of one example, the reason I'm asking the question is that uh, you prepare for so many things going into a football right. game. And I wonder if you could think of a couple of things that you were prepared for if they threw it at you on uh, Saturday night with Davidson that you didn't see but were ready to roll. Well, I was convinced they were going to try a fake punt Saturday night. That's the one I, just, I was thinking. I knew, yeah. I knew. And we worked it all week long. I hounded Blake, uh, Coach Harrell, I, I hounded him all week long just about making sure we were secure, you know, with all the different formations and shifts and stuff. And we we had a couple of days we didn't do anything, we just work fakes. And so uh, – so we were ready for it. So, but they didn't, they, you know, they didn't try one there. But I, I was ready for something like that from them, whether it was an onside kick or a, a sky kick on the kickoff, or uh, you know, a fake punt or, or some kind of a crazy play on offense. And so we really tried to work a lot of those things the last couple of weeks to prepare our kids. And and I felt like we were prepared going into Saturday night, but uh, you know, fortunately, we didn't see anything. Like now the that. the reason that the coach was talking about the fake punt, and it, it makes perfect sense when you know this. If you don't know it, you don't know to look for it. But their punter is their backup quarterback, right. who ended up being the quarterback in right. the ball game yeah. for him. And so every time someone dropped back to punt, he's a backup quarterback. Right. So you have the opportunity to throw. So there was a reason that that wasn't just right. something you had a hunch about. You had some good information, some good intel right. there. Yeah, so it's uh, – and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of that stuff comes from, you know, in the opener you get such a volume of film to watch on the opponent. You know, we saw everything they did all last year, and so you can get a little bit of sensory overload with that much information. Yeah, so. I would bet that's true. We did have uh, uh, a question that was walked up to us during the break. Uh, it was from Jim. Jim was curious about what time the team – walks to the stadium before the ball game. That's a big deal at a lot of different schools right. across the country. Uh, the fans want to line up and, and watch right. as the guys come through. And so what time do the Bulldogs do that? Well, we uh, we get on the bus about 10 to 4 uh, and leave Cygnus Hall and, and, and come around and are dropped right uh, right in front of the Altman Center uh, just a couple of minutes before 4 o'clock. And so we're, we, you know, we make it to the game day locker room uh, right around 4, 4 o'clock, two hours before kickoff. Uh, each game day, uh, so uh, you know we and we have a great you know the, whether it's the parents or the stray dogs or you know or whatever group of uh, fans we have there, it's always a big welcoming party there uh, when we get off the bus. And we would encourage anybody that's uh, anybody that's there around that time to you know come over and, and cheer for the Bulldogs. So the parking lot that's behind the Altman Center, right. opposite the field, yeah, that yep. is uh, that's where everything uh, everything happens, mm -hmm. and so they can. Come out and see. I would love to see uh, fans do that. That would be a, a fun, fun scenario. Uh, Cam Jackson missed some time in the ball game. He okay? Yeah, had a good practice today. So uh, he's he's running around well, and uh, will start Saturday night and be full speed. So uh, look forward to seeing the ball in his hands. The uh, catamounts. Uh, I would uh, say there was something uh, I had noted about Tevin Floyd from a little earlier on. Uh, the game uh, Saturday was not – it was his first pick six, not the first time he'd scored a defensive touchdown. He shared with us that two years ago against Western Carolina, he had a scoop and score. Right. And so he does have two defensive touchdowns, but that was his first pick six in the game the other night. So uh, Tevin Floyd has been uh, at each of your first two uh, – press conferences so he's getting used to that stuff yeah and you know he not only is he a, a great player you know he's very well spoken i think he's he conducts himself very well uh, up there in front of the reporters and is a good representative of our institution so uh you know he's a he's a good one to have with us the bulldogs will take on the catamounts of western carolina coming up just this next saturday evening a break here then we'll come back and we'll kind of put our focus on the catamounts a little bit so uh, break right here we'll be back with the coach in just a couple of moments this is the mike houston radio show from fiery ron's home team barbecue in west ashley on sports radio 1450. i needed to deposit a check i was about to head to the bank but out of nowhere it just started to rain like really rain I did not want to go out. But then I was like, duh, just use your phone. Mobile deposit techno thingy to the rescue. 
I'm Raina, and I bank human at TD Bank. Uh, here we go. <laughs> From Fiery Ron's home team barbecue in West Ashley, this is the Mike Houston Radio Show. We welcome you back on Sports Radio 1450, the flagship station for the Citadel Sports Network. Four o'clock on Saturday is when we take the air. Six o'clock is the kickoff. Western Carolina will take on the Citadel Bulldogs in a Southern Conference matchup before the dogs go back into non-league action. Wanted to ask about one of the players because during the game, as you can imagine, we don't see everything. I'm kind of focused on the ball. I mean, it's one of those things right. that you don't always see real stellar blocking plays or whatever the case may be. I happened to catch one out of the corner of my eye in the ball game the other day. It was so notable because of the way the team Reacted. It happened near your sideline. Right. Had to do with an offensive lineman named Emmett Howie. Where's number yeah. <laughs> 63? Tell me what he. Uh, tell me what he did that got the guys well, so fired. Well, you know, the thing is, and this is one of the more enjoyable things, is when we do get the opportunity in a game like uh, last Saturday to get some of the guys in that don't play very often. Uh, it's really enjoyable to see them go out there and have fun and play well. And uh, Emmett's a scout team offensive lineman for us, and, and he's a very, very popular member of our program and, you know, very popular with the coaches, popular with the kids, and, you know, a, just a great, you know, great personality and everything and uh, works very, very hard, prepares us each week for our, for our uh, upcoming opponents. And so he gets in the ball game, and, and uh, Coach Thompson calls a toss play, and Emmett's leading it around through there. And Emmett's a big guy now. Yeah. And so he just absolutely flat backs the corner uh, from Davidson and, the sidelines goes nuts because now Emmett, he's good for one of the, about one a day in practice. He'll catch some, but catch one of our defensive kids, <laughs> and 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 he'll you know knock him knock him knock him sideways. And so uh, he's he's known for that. And so, but uh, see him have that block like that out in front, leading the play, and the sidelines really enjoyed that, and Emmett did too. So really excited for him and uh, his family. His dad was there Saturday night, and so got to see him. At, him at play and just what a what a what a great moment for them. Yeah, that was fun. There was no doubt that the guys got uh, completely jacked up over uh, the the play that was involved there. Let's talk about the team you'll play this week, and that is Western Carolina. You are uh, are friendly with Mark Spear. Tell everybody how you know each other. Well, Mark and I met uh, back uh, right around year two thousand. He was coaching at uh, Elon. He's an assistant coach there, and he recruited uh, the Asheville area, and I was the head coach at T.C. Robertson. And uh, so we got to know each other real well uh, there. We worked camps together in the summer uh, over the years, and so we've just both kind of uh, moved along in our careers and, uh, and found ourselves where we are now. But, uh, you know, I've always been, you know, pretty good friends and, uh, you know, similar beliefs about the way you do things and stuff like that. So I have a lot of respect for – for the job he's done there at Western, and uh, like I said uh, yesterday, I'm, you know, very happy for him and, and really pull for him each week, you know, except for this Saturday. Now, I'm, you know, this Saturday I'm gonna try to whip his rear end. So, uh, but uh, you know, he's he's a good guy. He was asked on the league's conference call that happens on Tuesday mornings 
Uh, Coach Houston goes first. The other uh, seven head coaches go after that. About an eight-minute thing every Tuesday morning where members of the media can uh, – remotely call in and and talk uh, with each coach and ask questions. When Spear was asked how he was able to turn some things around, he gave a lot of credit to his administration for one thing, said that they changed the culture at Western and not him because they gave him the resources to do so. Now, I know, too, because you've been asked this question, you have some ideas of how he's able to go uh, move this team from a team that in 2011 was one and ten, two and nine and ten, two and nine and oh nine, three and nine and oh eight. Uh, he had a rough couple of first years before he kind of got things built right. around a little bit, but he went from two and ten to seven and five and tied for right. second in the league last year. What were the things that you see about why he got them going in a better direction? Well, first, uh, I would say I do agree with him. Uh, if you're going to turn around uh, a program that has not been a consistent winner, it takes a, a solid commitment from the administration and the institution. Uh, football is different. It's a different sport. It takes different things to be successful in that sport than it does other sports. And you cannot treat football like you do other sports and expect to be successful. Um, and so, you know, they, they really got behind football at Western Carolina, made a commitment uh, to build the program, and they hired the right guy. Um, the biggest thing I think that you're seeing now is Mark put together a great staff. Uh, Mark recruited very, very well uh, from out of the gate, and then he's been able to retain those players and grow them up. I think he um, his first signing class, he signed 17 players. I think 16 of the 17 right. are seniors this year. That's right. And so he recruited good players like Troy Mitchell, and then he grew them up and retained them, and he's consistently done that back-to-back. And so that tells you uh, that he's treating the players right, that he is you know, be able to keep the bulk of his staff together because he treats his coaches right, uh, and he has a good atmosphere in his program. And I really think those, those are the key things to success, running a program that way and having that kind of support from the administration and the institution. Is it a big deal to have spent time in the league as a coach elsewhere? Because he has. Right. Helpful I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it hurts. Okay. I certainly don't think it hurts. You know, certainly uh, I had the luxury at Lenore Ryan of being in the league before I was the head coach, and it gave me a, a lot more familiarity with with the, the league opponents and, and the coaches and kind of their style of play and you know, last year, you know, was a, a learning curve for me with this league, even though I knew a lot of the coaches and, and, and being from the southeast, knew, knew the programs. It's different than, you know, you know, playing against them each week and, you know, trying to study their tendencies and learn what uh, they do and don't do. So uh, I certainly think that helps. Western Carolina is 1-0. They pulled away from Division II Mars Hill and route to a 42-14 victory on Saturday night. They scored on their first play from scrimmage, a 75-yard uh, double pass, as Coach mentioned, Newsom to Robinson. Uh, they racked up 583 yards of offense. They rushed for 200, threw for 383. Troy Mitchell had 298 yards passing and a touchdown in all. He accounted for 360 yards. Let's talk about him because he is, uh, when he's mentioned, obviously he's not a first-team guy because – as long as Huseman's in the league, Jacob Huseman, that's probably where people are going to put him. But uh, I would think he is uh, he's I quite think a he's challenge. Right, he's, right, he's right there with Huseman. He is a good football player. He is, uh, he is the catalyst that makes their offense go. And it's, it, it's the fact that he is um, you know, one of, if not the best runner that they have. Uh, and he's also an effective passer. And so you start running that spread run-pass option offense – uh, where he's got the option to, to hand off to a guy like Ramsey or Newsom, uh, keep it himself, or throw to somebody like Robinson or Benson or, or Hill or one of those you know dynamic receivers he has, and he's got a good offensive lineman a line in front of him, and that's how you put up those kinds of yards and those kinds of numbers. It's just they're going to spread you out, they're going to you know try to get you one on one matchups, and then try to take advantage of any uh, you know any 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 opportunities they see. His head coach, Mark Spears, says he's composed, he's hard to rattle, generally makes good decisions. I'm a big semantics guy, so that probably meant that there was a play in the game where he didn't make a good decision to say <laughs> generally makes uh, good decisions. But uh, that, you know, good praise from his coach there. 
uh, a guy that uh, that certainly has the ability to do more than one thing and and has guys to distribute to as well. Last year's ball game, October 25th of the 2014, ended up 29 to 15. At halftime, it was eight seven Bulldogs. Right. So take us back to what happened in that ball game. Uh, that was, you know, you're in October. That was probably game number seven ish. So yeah, I somewhere, think. In yeah. There. So, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Talk about where you were as a football team at that time and how that game went down. Well, you know, that's did. that's right about when we were starting to really gel and come together. And we thought we had a great chance to win the game, and we did. And you know, we just we made too many mistakes. That's a game that you know, looking at it, we just you know, repeatedly made some mistakes. And you cannot make mistakes like we did, putting the ball on the ground, penalties. Um, busted, busted plays uh, defensively. You cannot make mistakes like that against good football teams, and they, you know, they took advantage of those and made us pay. And so, uh, you know, that's you know, you look back and you, know, you can pinpoint whether it's you know the fumble going in when we're getting ready to score to be up nine or ten in the third quarter, late in the third quarter, and and we fumble it out the end of the end zone. Western goes down and scores, and so it's a fourteen point swing there. You know, that was, of course, a, a, a crucial point in the ball game. Or, or the opening drive, we took the ball, marched it all the way down the field. Aaron tweaks his ankle. Dominique comes in. We put the ball on the ground, and we turn it over on about the 25-yard line going in. Uh, you know, just you can't make those mistakes and beat a team like Western. The fumble out of the back of the end zone that you're referring to was Isaiah Smith, and that also kind of falls under one of those teachable moments. No but that was one of those that you were like, oh, that one really hurt us. Well, and that's, you know, Isaiah made the comment to me today, and I haven't said anything to him all week and uh, you know about the game or anything like that. We're in practice today, and I'll say something to him, but, you know, I need you to come up big on Saturday. And he said, Coach said, he said, I owe this bunch one. He said, you know, I, I cost us last year. So, you know, there's a lot, lot personal riding on the game for him. It was going to be, if I remember right, about a 50-yard run for a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, defender comes up behind him and punches the ball yeah, out. Trey Morgan, you know, great. And then Trey's back, an outstanding uh, safety for Western Carolina. He made a great play from behind. And like, just like we talked about with Rod earlier, it was a, you know, a teachable moment uh, for, for, for a young man there. And, uh, and, and, you know, certainly Isaiah's improved from that moment. You mentioned that uh, Allen did play in the ball game last year, saw some snaps there, but uh, – that was a circumstance in a game like that where when Aaron was ready to go, he was coming back in the ball. Game. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, now Dominique's a year older, and he's, and he's ready to lead our team Saturday. So we were really excited. I was, uh, based on not having been around him all that much, I was impressed with the things he had to say yesterday at your presser. Yeah, he's very well spoken, very mature. Uh, you know, he's got, got some humor to him, so he's, he's able to – come up with some stuff every once in a while but uh you know he's 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 getting more and more comfortable every day with being the guy uh he, he's had a good week of practice this week uh and so I, I look forward to seeing him play saturday night it's western carolina coming to the citadel it's a very big game early in the season and uh the dogs uh and uh, catamounts will get together coming up on saturday and both will uh will want to be much better than they were in week one though uh some would say, wow, I was pretty impressed with how you did on Saturday. So uh, it'll be an interesting game, a great test for you right off the bat like this because I'm it sure be. if you could put it later, you probably would choose sure. to do so. Yeah, you, yeah, I don't think either one of us real fired up by having a conference opener this early in the early in the year, but we didn't have a whole lot of say in it either. So uh, it is, it's this next game on our schedule. So for us, it's the biggest game of the year because it's the only one we play this week. So that's the way we're treating it. And, uh, we're focused on, you know, just trying to do the things that uh, control the things that we can control and, and do the things that good football teams do. That's, that's been the key for success last week. We've talked about this a little bit before, but for those listening, talk about where you get the bulk of your work done in the course of a week. You, uh, I know you work Sunday nights, bring right. the guys back on Sunday nights, but how do you prepare? When are you uh, trying to get most of your heavy lifting done? And then when are you trying to back off a little bit? Well, for Western Carolina, we did a lot this summer. Uh, we spent, uh, you know, well over a week uh, just on them this summer with this this big a ball game this early in the year, and uh, and then of course we came in Sunday uh, right after church and looked at the film from uh, from Saturday night and looked at the film with our kids and then immediately started on Western Carolina Sunday night. But uh, Monday and Tuesday are the big, you know, game plan days where you go back over the stuff from the summer, you go back over films from last year, you go over there. You know their game against Mars Hill and really break it down and compare it to you know tendencies you had from uh, their stuff last year and and you know by by late Monday night 
uh, you you got a pretty good game plan put together. You know, and uh, Tuesday morning you kind of revisit it after you slept on it, and uh, you know by by mid morning you've got it finalized. You shared with me in your office last Thursday that the it's the opener. You had the hay in the barn quite a while back. But then you said, eh, there's only about a half a dozen things that I'm still kind of worried about. And so what's that number right now? I mean, well, uh, Troy you know. Mitchell causes a, that to, you know, kind of, you know, explode there on us. So, yes, the, the biggest thing is just worried about uh, we've got to play discipline. We've got to attack them uh, defensively, but we've got to play so disciplined, take care of our responsibilities. We cannot, uh, we can't, you know, make the mistakes that we made last year and give them the opportunities for the huge plays. And then, uh, offensively, we've got to basically play like we did Saturday night. You know, if we play mistake-free football on offense, we're gonna we're gonna, you know, they're gonna have their hands full. You know, uh, anybody is with us. Uh, so I, I, I just think we're capable of, of that kind of that kind of uh, you know output. So, uh, but we gotta just we gotta play mistake-free football. One more segment with the coach when we come back to Fiery Ron's home team barbecue in West Ashley. Thanks for joining us tonight on the Head Coach Mike Houston Radio Show, and we will return with more in a moment on Sports Radio 1450. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. Value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. I'm working with a new partner today, Mike Shannon, and Mike's favorite players on the Padres. What's his name again? Made him say it right off. <laughs> it was like Kurt Bavakwa or something, but. Matagula? So I can bring up Matungalu. Matungalu, yeah, yeah, there you go. Matungalu. Um, Elva Matungalu. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. It's all good. Do what? Mm -hmm. Final segment of the Coach Mike Houston Radio Show from Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley. Welcome back with the head coach. I'm Mike Legg. We have the Western Carolina Catamounts coming to town for a 6 o'clock ball game on Saturday, 4 o'clock broadcast time on the Citadel Sports Network in uh, several markets throughout the state. Coach, it was uh, put out today, I guess a little bit overnight, but uh, I thought I'd congratulate you on working for what's been called for the fifth straight year 
the number one college in the South, according to U.S. News and World Report. Five in a row for the Citadel with that honor. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite a big deal. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think we've uh, – I'm pretty sure we've mentioned that to some of our recruits in the past. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to continue to do so. But it's – you know, it, it, that, is, that is one thing that is really beneficial in uh, in recruiting, and we, just, we harp on it. It's what an outstanding education that you're going to get if you come to the Citadel and play football. Uh, and that, you know, graduating from there will change your life. And uh, so it's something that we believe. And, and you know, and anytime you can sell something that uh, has that kind of validity to it, uh, you know, parents, you know, they, uh, that's very, very important to them. You know, your son's going to come here. He's going to get a great education. He's going to play football. And when he graduates, and he will graduate, you know, he's going to be able to get a good job. So, uh, you know, great, great news for the Citadel. It's uh, one of the most respected college ranking services out there, U.S. News and World Report. Uh, and they named uh, the Citadel number one public college in the South for the fifth consecutive year, offering up to a master's degree. So five in a row, that is a, a big deal. And so uh, just saw note of that and wanted to bring that to, to your attention, of course. We wanted also to remind you, again, it's uh, Military Appreciation Night on, on Saturday at the game. It's a whiteout at the game. Uh, our friends at the Citadel Bookstore asked us to remind you that if you don't have plenty of things to wear that are white, you can uh, you can get into that at their place. They will certainly have some offerings for you where that is concerned. So Western Carolina, tough opponent coming up. We talk a lot about their offense, and we talked about the spread and the option and all the different things that they try to do there. Let's talk about what they do on the defensive side of the football as far as uh, scheme and what you expect out of them on Saturday, Coach. Well, you know, they, they, they base out of a 4-3, but you know, last year we saw 4-3, we saw under. Uh, we certainly could see some split front from them. Um, but, you know, they're, they're big up front. Uh, they're experienced up front. Uh, they have – you know, a, a big Mike linebacker that's, you know, a real tough guy and then a couple of speedy guys on the outside and uh, very experienced secondary. I mentioned Trey Morgan, uh, you know, earlier. Uh, Harris, another great player back there in the, in the, on the back end. But, uh, you know, they return virtually everything from their defense from last year, so they're a year older and a year better. So uh, we expect them to be a, a formidable opponent there Saturday night. This really has been a league year where – Everybody seems to have a very large number of starters back. It just seems like an abnormally high number of uh, of folks. Now, Western Carolina's got some some deals. Uh, they'll have some problems about this time next year, you would think, because they're going to lose 17 awfully good football players. Yeah, they do. So, but that's you know, but again, you never know uh, if they've continued to do a, a great job of recruiting, which I would expect them to. Then they probably got some guys waiting in the wings. And when you get the program to that point, and I've mentioned before. You know, our last year at Lenore Ryan, we played one freshman. We redshirted 20-some kids, and, you know, those, those are the guys that are playing now there. And when you get your program to that point, uh, it's, you're just reloading every year. You know, there's no more building the program. It's there. Next guy up kind of a, a scenario. Yeah. I was excited because my favorite guy, I understand, is going to play – in the game, one of their defensive tackles <laughs> is from uh, Kenya, and his name is Elva Matungalu. And so we get to say Elva Matungalu. It does not look like Elva Matungalu. I at would absolutely all. butcher his name. So he, <laughs> I got to meet he, he and he and Troy Harris were both, or, or uh, Troy Mitchell were both at uh, at the uh, SoCom Media Day this summer. So I got to meet him, and he is a large human being. So. And my understanding is from this young man is that he never played football before he came to college. Now that just seems crazy to me. But uh, one of those that you, one of those guys you found rather than recruited, you know, something like that. Well, he looks like a football player. If he didn't play before he got here, I know why they, <laughs> I know why they grabbed him. Well, they are a uh, solid ball club. There's no question about it. Uh, they are going to come in on Saturday to take on the Citadel Bulldogs and uh, then move on to play a game at the University of Tennessee. You're going to go and play an FBS school as well in your third game of the season with uh, Georgia Southern coming up. And so both uh, have that going on. Last year, Western Carolina finished their season in a game against the number one team in the country at the time, Alabama. So uh, they are uh, playing some stiff competition as the Bulldogs do from time to time as well there. So. Yeah, and they, you know, they were the only team in the country uh, last year to take the opening uh, possession and drive down the field and score on University of Alabama. The first, first, uh, first drive, they took it 80 yards and 
scored and went up 7 nothing to start the game. So, uh, you know, they did something nobody else did against the Crimson Tide and last I year. I bet Saban took all 11 of them out. Yeah, well, he he was not real happy on the sideline because they, you know, they moved the ball really well in the first half last year against Alabama. Scored 14 points. Uh, Robinson had a big first half. We watched that game Monday, uh, and you know they played really, really well down there. So, uh, yeah, that but that shows the ability that they have. Now back to Mitchell just a little bit because this is a guy who's multi-talented. Obviously, he can run and he can throw. Uh, do you get a feel with him? And I saw him play, so I'm just looking for your opinion on the deal. But uh, do you get a feel for what, you know, dropping back or is he running and then dropping back or, you know, sprinting out, if you will? Tell us a little bit about what he looks like when he takes a snap. Well, you know, they, they do a lot of different stuff. The, the big thing is the run-pass option, which is very popular in college football right now. You see Baylor doing it. You see Oregon doing it where every play is a running play and a pass play both at the same time. It's in, I equate it to being a lot like the triple option because you have a dive play, you have a dive player, you have a quarterback that can keep the ball or he can, he can pitch it. And just for them, their pitch is a pass. And so it's some kind of a short screen or slant or hitch or, or something. It could be a fade route, um, but it's a, it's a triple option style play. But that's, you know, that's their – number one way of throwing the football. Uh, they do sprint him out a good bit, you know, run true sprint out, run some naked boot uh, to get him out of the pocket. Uh, and then they do have some uh, quick game, five-step game like everybody else. I realize that I mentioned your fullbacks and the, the type of night they had against Davidson. I didn't mention Evan McField by, uh, by name, a redshirt yeah. freshman who yeah. uh, obviously has had the type of camp that has you feeling pretty good about where you are at the fullback spot. Well, we felt great coming out of the spring. He had a great spring and has really worked hard in the last year to develop himself. Uh, and so he's he's someone that we thought was going to to come around like he has, and and he continues to you know to back up our confidence in him. And so he had a he's had a good week this week. So I expect him to go out and play well Saturday as well. Should be an interesting ball game right off the bat here. The SoCon season begins at least uh, with these two ball clubs, and then they each go uh, back out and uh, do some other things after that. So it's uh, it's going to be a really uh, interesting ball game. Hope we have a great big crowd, like you mentioned. Lots of things to go going on in conjunction with the ball game too. Yeah, and that's you know that's something that uh, I hope I hope our our alumni and fans will come out and uh, the core. I think is going to be you know pretty rowdy there because. You know, it's going to be a great college football game. You have two teams that are playing well. They're both hungry. Uh, and so for us to have the kind of electric atmosphere and environment that, uh, that we need behind us to make the difference there at home uh, is really important. So uh, I'm expecting that. You had a uh, big roar behind you when we were talking to you in the post game. It made me think that something might have been extended to the cadets. That something got those guys pretty excited. Ah, you got there, a bunch right? of overnight Saturday night. Yeah, okay. always, yeah. I got you. I thought maybe, maybe that, that'll do it. That'll oh, yeah. It. So, well, Coach, thanks for coming by. We appreciate no you very much. Enjoyed it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Uh, fantastic. Look forward All to being right. there. Go Bulldogs. Thanks. That's Coach Mike Houston. I'm Mike Legg. We're going to wrap it up from here at Fiery Ron's Home Team Barbecue. Our thanks to Barry Daniels back in our studios. Thank you very much for listening in. The Bulldogs play at home against Western Carolina, 6 o'clock on Saturday, 4 o'clock broadcast time on that day. Until then, I'm Mike Legg. So long from Home Team Barbecue in West Ashley.